This, this is Smorgasbord. Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I am Mick, and here is my co-host. I am so excited. We're we're gonna burn a robot. <laughs> Not on this episode, but in the future. <laughs> I guess that was the, f- the first short film we mo- we worked on together. Yes, and there was a robot head that somebody yeah. wore. So we're going to burn it. <laughs> For fun. It's been two years and it's <laughs> taking up space in my closet. <laughs> you could have put stuff in it. It is hollow. I did try putting stuff in it, but no, I didn't actually try. It's a good idea. I could use it See? for storage. It's a storage bin. But we're still going to burn it. (laughs) We're still going to burn it. (laughs) We'll store it with gasoline. (laughs) Other flammable objects. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, today we're not talking about robots. We're talking about, as promised, carnival food. Not carnival food. (laughs) (laughs) This time, actual carnival food. (laughs) As originally intended by me. (laughs) Cakes, snow cones. Snow cones. (laughs) Cotton candy. Mini donuts. Corn dogs. Mini donuts. Yeah. That kind of carnival food. Yeah. <laughs> Not the carnival. You, <laughs> you can pry the corn dog off of a dead clown's hand. Exactly. Someday we're going to get someone who'll keep us in check and actually help us do our stuff Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we're confident sometimes. <laughs> Just not today or yesterday. Nope. <laughs> Before we get started... I guess we start every show with what's on our palette this week. Oh, ooh, I got to start as off, Angel. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I've discovered my favorite ice cream ever. Ooh. It's shortbread ice cream. Unfortunately, it is a Christmas only uh, flavor. And hence, I found it in the sale aisle <laughs> in the grocery store. But it is so good. I've already eaten five cartons by myself and these are not the tiny little pint cartons these are the big ones <laughs> what so, and there's only a few left in the grocery store by my house so i do plan on going back there and cleaning them out what brand's it from it's from chapman's i i think it's a canadian brand because i don't remember ever seeing this wait so it's America. shortbread flavored ice cream Yes, but there's also chunks of shortbread in it. <gasps> so it's pretty amazing. Isn't that just sugar then? It, Of course it is. <laughs> and at the checkout, the cashier was like, ooh, is this good? And I was like, no, because <laughs> I thought she was going to go and buy one. <laughs> but I didn't want her to buy one. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's what I've been eating. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and you? Speaking of ice cream, I tried... Dairy free Ben and Jerry's for the first time this week. What's it made of? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> it was chocolate fudge flavored dairy free Ben and Jerry's ice cream. ice cream. Oh, that sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah, I was trying it out it. with my, my new mini fridge, my man cave. <laughs> which is really weird. a tiny No man one cave. has seen Mick in a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from Zoom. <laughs> I can't help it, you know. <laughs> I got a new monitor, a new computer, (laughs) all those Steam sales that I've been collecting over the years, so I kind of have to play through all those games. Uh, Everything has culminated to this moment. Yep. In two weeks, I've amassed almost 120 hours, and oxygen is not included. (laughs) Hey, that's pretty pretty good. I played Among Us once, or twice, and I just sucked at it so bad. I (laughs) killed someone, and then... (laughs) Someone definitely saw me. <laughs> and I'm like, they won't see me if I jump into the vent. <laughs> yeah. Worst murder ever. But speaking of murders, today, <laughs> today we're going to cover what a carnival is or traveling shows. We'll go through a brief history of what they are and then really get down to what's more important, the food. Because yeah. I ended up spending way too much time researching the food in this episode. I have 14 pages. Oh my god. (laughs) So what exactly is a carnival or a traveling show? Well, a carnival is a temporary event that includes a variety of activities for patrons to enjoy, such as rides, vendor stalls, shows, and games. 
It's essentially a big party without needing a reason to have one. What differentiates a carnival, for example, to something like the circus is that a circus would be just a group of entertainers who may not be in a permanent location like a carnival, but the entertainment is focused on only one area where people gather and watch. The carnival is different. It's not very interactive. No, not really. Carnival is super interactive. Yeah, most of the carnival you'd probably end up having people have to do stuff to enjoy it rather than watch. Pop balloons. Exactly. Oh, I was so good at it. Exactly. Actually, I, at least when I was seven, I thought I was so good at it. Did you? You literally just throw things at balloons and they just pop. <laughs> I feel like those are one of those games that if you don't pop something, you just... I don't know what you're doing, man. Yeah. <laughs> You'll, your your dead mom will show up and be like, you've disappointed this <laughs> You can't even lineage. pop this balloon properly. <laughs> Carnivals are also different from amusement parks because amusement parks are in a permanent location versus a carnival, which as the traveling show name connotates, moves around and it's not necessarily always in one place. To try to define exactly what a carnival is, I would put maybe three different key factors to, d- to define it. So one is it's not set at a permanent location. Two, there's a variety of amusements and things to do. And three, the event is not focused on a central location, meaning people can walk around and have a choice to what experience to enjoy. I'd say more or less that kind of is a simple way of defining what a carnival is. That's how I, I've never clearly thought of what it is. I just know it's got lights, it smells <laughs> like popcorn and a little bit like pee. And... <laughs> You use a lot of money to play games that are definitely not rigged or anything. No, not rigged at all. As long as you know how you're being rigged. (laughs) (laughs) You go in there knowing that you're not going to knock over the third milk jug. (laughs) Because it's like, it's weighted funny. I don't know. (laughs) And for this episode, I want to focus only on American traveling carnivals, because there's probably different fairs or carnivals around the world and... That will be a whole different story to uncover once we That's get That's another 14 pages <laughs> <laughs> for another time. The history of the traveling carnival, though, is kind of interesting as well. What's nice about this one is unlike last week where the carnival had religious origins, this week, not really so much. The <laughs> only religious roots are in the word itself, carnival, which we learned last week is... What was it again? Something mm, about saying... Yeah. Something saying goodbye Carnage. to flesh. Yes. <laughs> Farewell to, to meet or something like that, which is based on a celebration done by Catholics. So, yeah. so that's all we covered last week. If you want to know more about that, go watch the previous Carnival episode. Not from last Carnival. Week. <laughs> we'll put a link somewhere. Go find it in the description, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody does the show notes. It's not me. <laughs> nope. I think I do it. American Carnivals, or Carnies for short, don't have any really religious connections, as we mentioned. But guaranteed, there still will be a lot of food. The origins of the American Carnival all point back to the 1893 World Columbian Exposition that was held in Chicago to commemorate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus invading America. Oh, we're back to colonialism. Yeah, come on. Have we learned anything (laughs) in this show? It's either religious or colonial. Uh, Okay, or both, if you're lucky. (laughs) Uh, traveling bands of entertainment before this expo were prevalent already, especially during the 18th century, but most of these were rather small. You, know, you won't have rides, you won't have big wagons and merchants and all that. Those all came during 1893, during the celebration. What's interesting about this celebration is it was actually held back by year. <laughs> they screwed up the 400th anniversary. <laughs> they celebrated <laughs> it in the 401st anniversary of Christopher Columbus. Which is kind of funny because isn't 401 the error when you can't find a yeah <laughs> <per page>? when, <laughs> yes yes it is 401 carnival not found <laughs> <laughs> sorry your invasion is not found <laughs> colony not found i mean that's <laughs> technically true because he was looking yeah. for something else <laughs> yeah true maybe they were on to maybe that's why it's called the 401 error <laughs> oh <laughs> that's deep also founded in 1893. Who knows? The event itself was crazy successful because they sold over 25 million tickets, which is pretty big what? given the American is there population. Even that many people? Yeah. In 1893, I don't think it was 300 million people. I, I guess it's probably under 100 million people. So, yeah. Quite a bit of tickets. I feel like in the pre industrial age, I'm like, yeah, like four people was alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
one to start the fire, one to cook the food, and one to eat the food. And the then other the other two to... are just freeloaders. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who's in a group project knows that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the event itself was an exhibition of everything new, crazy, and strange. Some examples of the stuff that were shown in the exhibition were the first use of the Ferris wheel, who was invented by George W. Ferris. There were architectural discoveries of different buildings. There was an electrical electricity convention, I guess, where they showed different things like the electric kitchen. There was a moving sidewalk. You could see also the electrotachyscope, which is an early form of... Is it one pictures? of those things that you... Oh, okay, never mind. I it's... thought it was one of those glass balls and you touch it and then the <laughs> little rays like oh. to your fingers. <laughs> no, I don't think... No, it's not like that. It's those... um. It's like the spinning thing. And then when you spin it, it looks like it's... The image is moving, but it's just... Yeah. It's like it's early like... animation. Basically. Yeah, exactly <laughs> that. But it's like a picture of a horse. <laughs> yeah. It's just going... Pretty much. <laughs> that was actually invented because of a bet, if I remember right. Because the bet was that horses at some point had all four hooves off the ground. Oh, right. So they okay. wanted to prove that, I so they took a series of photos. Story. Yeah. <laughs> the World Columbian Exposition was so successful that people actually wanted to bring some of the festivities to the rest of the country, hence the creation of the traveling carnivals, because they wanted to show all this mystery and crazy flair. The adventurous people started to create traveling companies. Many failed since there aren't as many people in rural America. <laughs> <laughs> they thought 25 million people would show up. I don't know why. Probably thought just a few, but... Like four. So much less showed up. <laughs> yeah. The first known traveling company to set up a carnival was the Ohio-based Canton Carnival Company. who started the first carnival in May 30, 1899. Party like it's 1899. Mm-hmm. Which mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> we have electricity. Uh, what's interesting about carnivals as well is the word midway was invented during the Columbian Exposition. The midway defines the ground where the carnival attractions are held. And that word was invented here because it gets its origin from where the World Columbian Exposition was held, which was in the midway placeons. That's why we call where everything in the carnival happens the midway, which I actually didn't know you called that I the midway. I didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been an American thing. Nice uh, to me. Yeah. Those people eventually made these traveling companies that became carnivals. They were much grander than the earlier traveling bands of entertainment because, as we mentioned, the exposition itself had these cool new things like electricity and blah, 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 which helped really bring more entertainment to people. It wasn't just a, ba a wooden wagon of curiosities. curiosities. It's actually just a jar. Exactly. <laughs> and a few other carnival facts is that apparently there's a secret language shared between carnival employees called the carnival cant. Similar what? apparently to pig Latin. And since wrestling was also a form of carnival entertainment back then, the language is also then adopted by wrestlers. The entertainment wrestlers, not Olympic wrestlers. Is there a difference? <laughs> One is fake and one know. is physical, <laughs> actual wrestling. I don't know anything about wrestling. <laughs> and the WWE is entertainment wrestling, where it's not real wrestling. And then there's actual real Roman, like Greco-Roman wrestling. Yeah, the sport wrestling, okay. which I did in high school. I found what? This, really? Did you yeah. speak this language? I did not, because this is the language oh, of the entertainment wrestling. You're the wrong kind of wrestler. <laughs> yeah, the real wrestler. <laughs> I was trying to find different examples of it, but I couldn't really find much. You think if we call up Hulk Hogan, he'll know? He might. Um, it was very much in the earlier times of wrestling, so I don't know if the WWE people use this, but I'm sure there's a wrestling language used by Hulk Hogan. Today, though, carnivals obviously are a little bit more intricate, but I wouldn't say that much because... At the same time, it's just really more updated technologies rather than massive changes. You'll still see fairy rides like the Ferris wheel, all that. You'll still see the stalls and the booths. I think one of the only major difference really is there's not as many market stalls in carnivals. Mm, right. It's mostly food and games. You can, yeah, the only thing you're going to walk away with is a plushie if you win one. Yeah, and an empty <laughs> wallet. 
Yeah. Or you might not even walk away with your wallet. Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, once it's empty, because you try to hit those milk jugs one too many times. (laughs) Like, what do I even need a wallet for? And you'll also see that it's not as prominent as back in the 1900s. Usually you probably see a carnival in state or country fairs or smaller events like fundraisers. I think here in Vancouver, you really see it in the Lansdowne Center once in a while. The only yes. place I know it shows up. There's sometimes some random ones that pop up in parking lots. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> but they're fun. I mean, you do drop quite a bit of money. Right. Oh, we do have the Richmond um, Night Market. Night Market, which is... They call it Night Market, but I'm pretty sure it's a carnival. Because they have rides, they have games, they have stalls, they have food. It's not just... But they don't travel. Mm. Ooh, true. (laughs) But they don't stay there permanently. It's seasonal, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, They were only there in the summer. And now not at all. (laughs) Not at all. Yeah. I feel bad for all the COVID carnal... Carnies? Carnies. I don't know if that's a derogatory way of calling people that work at carnivals i think carny is a short for carnival not people who work at carnies mm-hmm. i don't know what you i think they just are called carnival. no they do call them carnies oh do they yeah but i don't know the history of that yeah it always sounds like it's not very nice not a very nice thing to call someone yeah it's like oh you're just a dirty carny <laughs> <laughs> okay if you put it that way <laughs> yeah but maybe they say it oh Who's this cute little carny? <laughs> no, that doesn't have the same ring to it. Well, we'll have to look into that. <laughs> Pretty well. Or anyone who's an expert in carnivals, maybe. Just let us know. Yes, enlighten us. Yeah. Because the only thing I know is funnel cakes. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of funnel cakes, it's time to finally hit our favorite part of the episode where we just talk about food. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so I collected a whole list of different carnival food. We're going to talk about some of the origins of your typical carnival food and then also go look into some really unusual, at least from what I found, carnival food out there. I'm excited. I don't know this list, so. Um, And since we're going to do a whole load of different food, we're going to do our two favorite questions for each of them. So we're going to ask each of them if they're healthy and if they're good. I can tell you 90% of these are not healthy. (laughs) And 90% of them are good (laughs) delicious yeah (laughs) so we're gonna start with the i guess the most common one i don't know we're just gonna start with popcorn just start with any oh popcorn all right the origin of popcorn well corn itself has been domesticated for tens of thousands of years (laughs) the early remnants though of popcorn seem to appear in central and south america over five thousand years ago there's also evidence of native americans themselves that date back about a thousand years ago Um, they found one in a cave in utah was likely inhabited by the Pueblo Indian. Just one corn? <laughs> no, I think it was a collection of corn. Okay. <laughs> like, wow, they found one. <laughs> Ooh, they found a popcorn. That means they had popcorn. Definitely not the heat popping it by accident. I don't know. We're not anthropologists. So. No. Back then, it was used in different ways. Some of it was decorative. So you could see headdresses and all that with popcorn in it. But it was also used for consumption. What's interesting is back then it was actually consumed like cereal. There's evidence to suggest that it was eaten with milk and sugar. What? Yep. <laughs> is it crunchy or do they just eat well corn? Like I fresh? think it's more chewy because the discovery of the popcorn was likely because of fire. Like obviously... People just put two and two together eventually and put the corn with the fire. (gasps) As we know, heat probably (gasps) wasn't as strong back then. So early versions of piling (laughs) (laughs) We'll probably post a video of what Angel just did for people (laughs) who are listening. (laughs) That was cavemanning. She was caveman miming. Popcorn. (laughs) Early versions of popcorn apparently looked more like parched corn. Just more just dried corn, I guess. So thirsty. And over time, through cultivation heist, and th- finding the right strains of corn, do we really find popcorn as we know it today? So it took a while until popcorn became what we know today. The simplicity of how to make popcorn is likely why colonizers also adapted popcorn. So early American settlers probably found this as a neat trick to way, as a way to cook corn, so they adapted that as well. 
But the origins of popcorn do root back from pre-colonial ages. When it comes to popcorn today and you want to find how to make it, there's the corn kernels, which according to the USDA need to be at 14% moisture. <laughs> yes, it needs. It can't be completely dry or it's yeah. not going to pop. And to get it to pop, you also need heat. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> in carnivals, you'll probably see them in popcorn makers, but as everyone probably knows, to make popcorn, you just need the corn. But you could also sweeten it with sugar or cook it in a kettle to get the ke kettle corn as well. Oh, I love kettle There's corn. It's a more so modern take to it, I guess, which is super tasty and essentially popcorn. It's sweet and salty at the same time. Yeah. So it's just infused or layered popcorn. I guess it just, yeah, I don't know. I've seen them. I've watched them make it before. Yeah. They're just a big old pot. <laughs> yeah. And I think just you just stir. stir. In terms of strange concoctions, I found that in Minnesota, they have Comet corn, which is making popcorn yeah. using liquid nitrogen. What? Oh, so they're like freezing the yeah. corn until it pops? Yeah. Does it taste? Does it taste different? I don't think so. What The only thing that makes this different is that when the popcorn served to you, it's smoky, <laughs> like a comet that just landed in the ground. <laughs> it's made of corn. <laughs> yep. That's it for popcorn. It's national holiday in America. Apparently, is January nineteen. <gasps> that was yesterday. Oh yeah. As we're recording this, it is. Wow, I didn't have a single piece of popcorn yesterday. Neither did I. I was <laughs> suffering in pain. And as we asked the two questions, is it healthy or is it good? Apparently, it can be healthy. If there's no butter or sugar. Oh, since so the boring kind. <laughs> yeah, because it's pretty much just a grain, so it's full it's of corn. fiber. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's good. It's good, yeah. It's good. All right, up next are candy apples. Ooh, yeah. Which I have to say I'm not a fan of. Really? Oh. I guess the time. consistency is kind of weird because you have yeah. to, like, bite through the candy. Sometimes it stabs your mouth because... Teeth murder candy. right there. <laughs> yeah. I've always liked it. <laughs> Maybe I just have to find a good candy apple. I've had a really good one on Halloween. You know how your parents always warn you, like, don't eat things that people make? Right. You're supposed to eat only packaged. I, I did not care. This lady <laughs> gave me a candy apple and I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> did you fall asleep? That was asleep? great. Did you turn into Snow White? Nope. <laughs> princess Leia? Which, I don't know which princess it is. Princess, princess Aurora is the Aurora. sleepy one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Miss Sleepy one. Yep. That's right. Nope. Nope, I was fine. <laughs> um, the origins of candy apples come from 1908, invented by William W. Kolb, who discovered candy apple while trying to create new holiday sweets by playing with cinnamon candy. And he had this idea of dipping apples in them. What's interesting here is because they didn't try to use candy to sell fruit. He actually thought that maybe using fruit will make it more appealing to people to eat candy. Hmm. Funny how that's the reverse nowadays. Yeah, right? It wasn't really an instant hit, but it became a hit. And we know it's still pretty popular today. It's cute. Yeah. Like, as an accessory. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a little magic wand <laughs> that's glossy and, like, brightly colored. Yeah, exactly. On the flip side of candy apples, there's also caramel apples, which have a different origin story. Well, different in the same... It's created by Dan Walker in the mid-1900s, and similar to Kolb, he was trying to find a different sweet, but this time for Halloween, and decided to dunk apples in caramel. Which is, like, more intuitive, because caramel is easier to warm up and dip things into. Yeah. <laughs> I like caramel apples better. I haven't... I don't think I've tried... I need to, we, I need to try more apples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even an apple fan, but... <laughs> Dipped in sugar, yes. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Today, though, there are different flavors of covered apples as well. So there are taffy apples, which are... Weird. Yeah. They include peanuts, apparently. Mm -hmm. Don't know if, like... I think that's just too chewy. Like, you'll just have taffy all over your mouth. For it. It's, yeah. Nice. This is a kind of... It's like a filling polar. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> And there's also chocolate-covered apples, which can have a whole variety of other things attached to it, from crushed peppermint to marshmallows, marshmallows <laughs> to fudge to whatever you could think of. Essentially, the apple just becomes a vessel for more sweets. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to how to make apple candy apples, well, you need apples. 
and you need a stick to shove the apple in it. And then just making caramel or liquid candy, which is just heated sugar water. In high school cooking, we actually made candy and apples. Oh, no way. Which is one of the weirder... <laughs> We were like, we could have just baked cookies. I don't know why. <laughs> Making Maybe candied apples. Teacher was really into candied <laughs> apples. She could have been. We had to measure the temperature of the candy to make sure it's not burning, but also it has to be really hot. And uh, I just did not have the patience for it. I just ended up pouring like boiling sugar water, but like with not enough sugar because <laughs> I didn't measure it properly <laughs> onto my apple. So I just cooked my apple basically. I made boiled <laughs> apple. It's covered in water. <laughs> yeah. oh, it was disappointing. This one's covered in paper towel because I'm trying to dry it. <laughs> mm -mm. That's more fiber than, than you'll ever need <laughs> in one sitting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, liquid candy. I mean, I, I, we say it as just heating sugared water, but it is definitely an art. To make There's constant stirring. Yep. Yeah. What's fun about candied apples is it's national holiday, which is October 31st. <laughs> it's Halloween. Yeah. Do all these foods have national holidays? Most of them do. Wow. Well, I'm excited to see if there's one on my birthday. But we'll just keep going and I'll say yay <laughs> if it is. And when it comes, is it healthy or is it good? Well, apples are healthy. It could be good for your heart. <laughs> but, but combined with... Caramel candy. is high in fat and sugar, which is not good for your heart. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's even. <laughs> Apple is like a very starchy fruit too. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like carb on carb. Yeah. Depends on if you think that's healthy. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> Definitely not. Just because the apples are good for your heart doesn't mean that it counterbalances that caramel's bad. All the other crap. <laughs> yeah. I would say this is more on the unhealthier side. But Same. according to Angel, it is good. It's not my favorite, but I don't not like it. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it totally does. The next one we have are snow cones. The origin of snow cones are... As early as the commercial availability of ice. <laughs> <laughs> when did we figure out how to refrigerate things? Which is during the American Industrial Revolution, or the early 1900s. Well, back then, ice wasn't as readily available as it is today. Ice was actually delivered to you in ice trucks. Trucks would run around with blocks of ice, selling it to whoever wants. The origins of the... The snow cones itself likely came from this time because the everyday children would probably go ask for ice shavings from these passing trucks. And these trucks would gladly give some of these shavings away. And as these kids enjoyed consuming some of these ice shavings, parents also found ways to try to add more flavor to it. So some of them would add sugar, syrups, or even egg custard of sorts to it. What? Yeah. So that, I would try that. I would too. It's egg, vanilla, and sugar for anyone who wants to try it. Egg, vanilla, and sugar. Now, are you supposed to cook it, or you just mix the egg right in? Well, it's a custard. So I think you, you mix it oh, and right. heat it up a little bit. I don't know. I haven't made custard okay. in a while. Isn't I've that how you made, make custard? I have never made custard in my life. I think you have to heat it up. Okay. But for the person who wants to take credit for the creation of snow cones, that goes to Samuel Burt, or King Sammy. King Sammy. Yeah where he apparently sold his concoction of ice and syrup at a Texas state fair in 1919. I'm going to guess it wasn't cool colored back then. Yeah, probably not. Ah, oh, Sammy. And then by Come 1920, on. King Sammy, though, did invent the mechanical ice shaver, which allowed for snow cones to be produced even quicker. This man's entire life was spent innovating on ice. Oh yeah, it was. It's he even cool. is the one attributed to... Be responsible for the wax cone that snow cones come from. Oh, what an innovator. That's passion right there. Gives the respect. Mad respect. We call it snow cones, not Sammy cones. Sammy cones. <laughs> <laughs> In Hawaii, though, snow cones are not called snow cones. They're called shaved ice. And apparently they're also known for the rainbow flavored shaved ice. Which is banana, strawberry, and vanilla. Combined okay, with condensed that milk. Great. Yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. I think this is something actually. we should make. That is something we should make. I have an ice shaver in my storage room. Ooh. <laughs> it's it looks like a penguin. <laughs> now how to make snow cones? Well you the ingredients are pretty straightforward. You need ice, <laughs> <It's> ice. <laughs> and syrup of your choice. Um, if you want to make it carnival style, then get an ice shaver, get the wax cone, and put the ice on the cone, put the flavored syrup of your choice, and there you go. 
In carnivals, there's such a variety of different flavors from banana, watermelon, pineapple, blue raspberry, lime, grape, blueberry, cherry, coconut. I could keep going, but you know. It's just sugar, but oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. This is actually one of the ones that doesn't have a national holiday yet. And I'm <gasps> pretty upset about it. I think May 14 should be the national holiday. All right, it is that done. I have a reason to have a snow cone for my birthday every year. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Instead of a cake or in addition to a cake? Oh, instead of. I want a cake-sized snow cone. <laughs> That's a lot of snow cone. The Hawaiian style, the rainbow one with the okay, banana, okay. strawberry, vanilla, and condensed milk. Yeah, sold. Which I guess is just like Hawaiian halo halo. Which is great. Yeah, no complaints there. When it comes to is it healthy or is it good? If it's healthy, I mean, it's not it's, unhealthy. It's literally it's just water. sugar and water. It's the sugar part that makes it not healthy. Yeah. You need to hydrate, so yeah. hydrate with a snow cone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's next is corn dogs. <laughs> the origins of corn dogs apparently seem to be quite contentious. Some claim it, has, it was created as early as the 1800s when German immigrants arrived in America and found it battering their meat, not beating it up, putting batter in it. And deep frying it made it tastier. Does it though? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> are you are you questioning the validity of fried chicken? No, <laughs> but for corn dogs, it's slightly different. Oh, totally. Continue, continue. Anyway, it's just so, because the batter on chicken is actually crispy. The mm, corn dogs are not. Deep fried bread. Yum. But it's not. I guess, like... It's not actually it, bread. You use cornmeal. Cornmeal, yes. That's why it would... Yeah, that's why it's not crispy. It's so good. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> the states of Texas, California, Illinois, and Minnesota apparently are trying to lay claim to which German created the corn dog <laughs> first. At the end of the day, no one cares. Yeah, no. Literally no one cares. But there was apparently an application for a patent in 1927... By the man Stanley Jenkins, who created a machine that would fry battered food on sticks. <laughs> Just like any food that's like on a stick. I can make a corn apple. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> I think he might have specified a hot dog. I don't know. <laughs> the reason we probably don't know is because this is when things become really creepy. He disappeared after he applied his patent. So oh. while the patent still exists as under his name... He just disappeared. Disappeared. Oh. Maybe there's a corn dog conspiracy out here. I mean, there is like maple syrup mafia in Canada, so. Yeah. Could be corn dog. Exactly. Conspiracy. But also, apparently, in 1942, the Boyingtons trademarked the Pronto Pops, which are apparently very similar to corn dogs. And then in the same year, the Fletchers also brought their corny dogs to the state fair, which are. Corn dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Just with an Y at the end. Yeah. Now, I know we said we're going to specifically focus on American stuff, but I love corn dogs. So I tried to see if there were other ways to do corn dogs, and apparently there are. In Argentina, they're called pan chuckers, and they're apparently served with cheese. <gasps> oh, they do it better. <laughs> yeah. And then in Australians, they use wheat batter instead of cornmeal and call them Dagwood dogs, Pluto Pops, or Dibby dogs. <laughs> Those are so cute. I love it. Pluto Pops? Is it because it's like Pluto, Mickey Mouse's dog? Oh, God. Turned into a hot dog. It's terrible. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take five. <laughs> yeah. uh, I need to tell you that there's a Korean corn dog. So we've got open downtown. Where? It's at the corner of Denman and Robson, and you should definitely go try it. Is that the same place that makes those Korean tacos? No, they only have corn dogs. Oh my That's god. That's all they have. It's amazing. Okay, send that to me. Okay. I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> and they're massive too. They're like <laughs> Now to make corn dogs isn't as easy as making popcorn or snow cones. You need a hot dog or frankfurters and the corn dog batter, which usually includes cornmeal, flour, salt, pepper, some egg, and milk. The reason why it's egg and milk, I think, is because you really want it to be super thick, the batter. 
I'm gonna fall off. And then you just need a deep fryer with vegetable oil and a stick to put the hot dog <laughs> and corn dog in. And you just dip the batter for about three minutes. It cooks pretty quickly because the hot dog's already cooked anyway. So you're really just cooking the batter at this point. Making it crispy. Going back to the Fletchers, who were the ones who brought the corny dog to the Texas State Fair, they apparently claim that mustard is the only approved condiment. Oh, they would be wrong. <laughs> yeah. I think it's kind of bullshit to gatekeep what condiments go <laughs> corn dog. Yeah. I think I feel like mustard is actually one of the worst. Oh, I disagree. I think mustard is the best though. I oh, agree really? with that. I okay. would not they do say don't put ketchup because it's a sin. I'm like, or not a sin, it's bad. And I kind of agree. I don't actually like ketchup with corn dogs. Mustard, so good. It's mayo all the way, dude. Mayo too. Ooh, <laughs> mayo too, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say very close second. Mayo a all the way. Big fan of mayo. When it comes to making corn dogs too, there are so many different ways people do it now. Like we mentioned, the Australians use a different batter. You could use different meats. You could put on different toppings. The world is your corn dog. It's how hmm. the line should wait go. Till, wait till you go to the place tomorrow and you try one of the squid ink, squid ink ones. I'm Maybe. so down. <laughs> Other strange concoctions I found were the scrapple, which is using no, left <laughs> a scrapple. So it's just leftover pork turned into a corn dog. <laughs> I mean, as long as you can make it into a wiener shape. Yeah. And then there are also the, in Nebraska, apparently there are moink balls, which is comes from moo and oink put together. Moink. <laughs> yep. It's almost an offensive word. Sounds like it, yeah. But it's not. It's moink. <laughs> which is taking a beef meatball, wrapping it in bacon, and then putting it on a stick. Oh yeah, I'm not mad at this. The National Day of Corn Dogs is March 20. Oh, oh, so close. So close. I had the feeling your birthday was in March, and I'm like, Yes. Did I get it? So close, so close. Not quite. Is it close, close enough? It's about a week away. Damn. That's close enough. That's that's pretty close. When it comes to, is it healthy or is it good? I just put a big fat nope on the healthy part. <laughs> that's why it's great. <laughs> I mean, the hot dogs itself is processed meat, and we already know how bad hot dogs can be, because we already know that it causes heart disease, for example. Yep. And then there's the fact that it's deep fried, which can also <laughs> lead to heart disease. And then there's the fact that you can't really only eat one corn dog. <laughs> so then you get into this calorie sink of eating about five, 300 calories a corn dog, and you end up waking up a few minutes later, realizing you just had 1,500. And then your arteries are completely closed. <laughs> yeah. But you're also still ordering another round. So <laughs> Sounds good. There's that with corn dogs. So to answer whether it's good or not, I mean... Obviously. No. <laughs> That's why you're ordering another round after your arteries <laughs> clog up. <laughs> your last breath. You're like, please, just one more. <laughs> just one more, dog. <laughs> Pluto, is that you? <laughs> oh, it's a good way to die. <laughs> yeah. Next on the docket now is cotton candy. <gasps> Oh, I like this one. Yeah. Is this cute? The early predecessors of cotton candy is spun candy, which has existed as early as the 15th century. But it's not really visually close to cotton candy because they're not as fine and silky as regular cotton candy. Because spot spun candy was created before the machine age, so you couldn't really spin it fast enough. To make Hand cranking candy. it. <laughs> yeah. What's really cool about cotton candy, though, it was originally called fairy floss. Oh, I knew this yeah. for some reason. <laughs> now, the reason it's called Fairy Floss, I think, has something to do with who created it. What do you think the profession of the person who created cotton candy was? A fairy. Write a second word. <laughs> flosser. A flosser. A professional <laughs> flosser. <laughs> the floss? It was a dentist. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think the floss was invented back then. <laughs> they were missing out back then. <laughs> like the floss was invented in like late or no, wait, <laughs> early 2000s. Really? It's been that long? No, by early 2000s, I mean like 2020. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cotton candy was actually created by a dentist, Dr. William Morrison. 
who was not trying to get more patients by ruining their teeth, but actually was trying to create a sugary treat for his patients. I feel like that's so counterintuitive as a as a dentist to give your patients sugar. <laughs> Maybe they didn't know better back then. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, they probably didn't. They thought smoking was good for you and eating like yeah. these different kinds of cheese so won't kill you. I mean, we still think that today. About the I mean, cheese. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure there's been an episode where you talk about that many cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, yeah, he invented it in 1897. And then by 1904, he brought his treat to the World's Fair in St. Louis with a candy maker by the name of John Wharton. There they sold 69,000 boxes. Oh, wow. At 25 cents each, which is back then a pretty expensive price because that's half the ticket price get into the fair itself right. 25 cents with all that inflation i'm gonna guess it's probably like eight dollars a box <laughs> maybe yeah how much is it to get into a carnival now yeah about 20 I bucks i don't so. know i haven't been to one okay wait what year was this 1904 1904 let me find a inflation calculator <laughs> yeah it doesn't have 1904 it's too early for it <laughs> Can't even calculate it. So we're going to say, okay, 1913. Let's just say 1913, it would be $6.54. Sure. So it's a slightly more. Yeah, then eight bucks, we'll eight add bucks inflation. Probably. Yeah, about eight bucks. <laughs> Good guess. Good guess. Go me. Okay. And from there, it became the popular food that we know it today. It wasn't until 1920, though, that Fairy Floss was renamed to Cotton Candy by, yeah, by Joseph Lacroix who invented a similar cotton candy machine and called this product cotton candy, since the product resembles the cotton that grows in Louisiana. Uh -huh. But you can eat it. <laughs> exactly. And when it comes to making cotton candy, it's in terms of ingredients, it's rather simple. You just need sugar and then food coloring or syrup flavoring if you want to add that flavor. I don't know what magic they do to make it so flossy. So the way they make it flossy is the cotton candy machine itself which spins the sugar out of a, the center right when you think about I think yeah. it's centripetal I've... force when you spin something it goes <laughs> towards the outside yeah so you put the sugar and all that in the middle which is heated up and as you heat it up just like the sugar, it out it melts like a it spider <laughs> exactly it melts it enough to get it spit out and then at that point it's so small because it's been spun at a fast rate i suppose I've always into... wanted to stick my hand in there and just go like this. <laughs> just have cotton <laughs> candy eat hand. <laughs> eat it like Winnie the Pooh eats yeah. honey. Yep. Yeah. But like, imagine both of my hands just like puffy. What's that drinking <laughs> game when you put like the two big jugs of beer and tape it into your hand and you can only get rid of it once you finish drinking it? I have never played this game. That's right. It's called Edward Forty Hands. Because <laughs> it's Edward Scissor Hands, <laughs> but... With you just have jugs. A bottle of 40. A bottle of 40 <laughs> on you. Sounds dangerous. Oh, yeah. But yeah it's a high school that. thing. But anyway. So, yeah, that's how it kind of works. You just spin it, and then eventually the strands form it kind of like a web, and then you collect it with your hands or using a paper stick. I prefer hands. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Flavors of cotton candy can vary from bubblegum, banana, chocolate, vanilla, watermelon, blah, blah, blah. These are all I've just... I've never been able to taste flavor. I mean, like, I Me know too. there's they a all vague the flavor. Same. There's a vague, this isn't just sugar flavor, but you don't know what it is. <laughs> It'd be interesting to do, like, a blind taste test. I feel like the flavor is suggestive from the colors that you're seeing. It, yes, for sure. But it actually doesn't correlate at all. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> The national holiday of cotton candy is December 7. Oh, once again. Not yeah. even close. <laughs> it's pretty far <laughs> off. <laughs> and when it comes to whether it's healthy or good, when it's healthy, it's just sugar again. So I'm it's gonna as say healthy not, or unhealthy as eating pure sugar. Yeah, but, how much can you handle just pure sugar? But apparently there was a rumor in 2015 that claimed that cotton candy is healthy. But this claim is a little bit misleading because the research actually comes from a 2015 study from the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee that suggested that it's not necessary to eliminate food groups to have healthy dietary patterns. 
That's all they said. Which you could deduce from there that you could eat cotton candy and still be healthy. But it doesn't directly say that it's healthy to eat cotton candy. No. <laughs> it's so vague you can interpret it in any way. When it comes to, is it good? Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a sweet tooth. This, that's <laughs> kind of sucks about all this carnival food. Is they're all sweet. Except corn dogs. <laughs> corn dogs has a sweetness to it. Yeah. But I mean, the primary taste is savory. That's what I like. Yes. Yeah. I like both. Yeah. Cursed with the love of both. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is mini donuts. Yeah. I don't like them, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah, no. Hmm. They're just donuts, but smaller, but like not even good ones. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of a snob when it comes to donuts. Like, <laughs> is it from Honey's? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still going to eat it, but I'm not going to like it. <laughs> 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 Let the record be told that you're forcing me to eat this donut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I do like the fancy donut, like icings and stuff. Right, fair enough. And you don't really get that often in carnival mini donuts. Yeah, no, they're just plain, they're just fried bread. Now, the origins of mini donuts, or donuts, I guess, to begin with, it seems to be as old as prehistoric Native American times. In terms of the U.S. colonial history, though, it seems to date back to around 1847. The story goes that this lady, Elizabeth Gregory, made a deep-fried dough of sorts flavored with hazelnuts and walnuts as a snack for her son, Hanson, as he traveled to New England, since these donuts were able to preserve for longer. So it was used as a snack during your boat traveling time. Your long, long travel times. Medieval Uber takes a long time. Mm -hmm. And apparently it was also during this trip that Elizabeth's son, Hanson, created the donut holes. <laughs> did he start eating it from the middle? <laughs> no, but I think you'll enjoy why he did that. It's because apparently he needed to transport these donuts during a storm. So he put the donuts through a wooden spoke of a ship's wheel. They had essentially a donut kebab. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So when he served it to his fellow crewmates, they had the hole in the middle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those donuts apparently became such a success. And I don't know if this is related or not, but apparently he was then burnt at a stake a few years later for being a witch. Hanson was yeah. burned at a stake? For being a witch. Apparently. That's how the story goes. I mean, oh, these brutal. donuts are too good to be true. <laughs> They thought his donut stick was like a wand. Yeah. <laughs> like a wizard's wand. <laughs> That's apparently how the story goes. Um, today, apparently, he is celebrated in this little town of Clam Cove in Maine for being the founder of the donut hole. Mm -hmm. His own statue and everything. He deserves a statue. Yeah. I don't know how true this story is, but the story is out there. We're going to go with it. Yeah. Some also claim that the history of mini donuts seems to root back to the Spanish-American War in the 1890s as a way to ration food. So regular donuts were too big, so they were given smaller donuts. Today, though, we remember it as a treat in a carnival. When it comes to making mini donuts, well, you start with the batter, which is usually made out of yeast, water, flour, milk, butter, egg, sugar, and salt. Or I'm sure you could find a mini donut batter just in a grocery near you. And then you need a fryer to fry the donuts. That's about it. Um, carnivals usually have fryers, restaurant fryers. You can actually fryers. watch them make it. Yeah, they usually make carnivals. it by hand there. Like you can watch them put the dough in and it floats. Exactly. And then it turns golden brown. And you're like, whoa, that's yeah. so cool. I want to be a mini donut maker. And then your parents are like, no, go to business school. Yeah. And then become a <laughs> mini donut maker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After having student debt. <laughs> but yeah, and then you usually actually... I don't know if you've seen these, but in car some carnivals, some carnival mini donut makers will have fryers specifically for mini donuts. So it's like an automated thing. Oh, yes. That flips it and it, all like, that. Yeah, I've seen those. Those are fun. Pretty <laughs> cool to watch. They float along and then they flip them back out. <laughs> exactly. Now, I think one question people might ask is when does a donut become a mini donut? This is not a hard rule of thumb but i'm gonna need to know the exact diameter <laughs> <laughs> but the one actual interesting um condition that i think might work is that mini donuts have no real holes like donuts because of its size so it expands and actually closes up those holes right 
Ooh. So I would yeah. say a donut <laughs> becomes a mini donut when it's small enough that the holes close. The holes close. That's a good. That's a good barometer. Yeah, <laughs> I think so too. But yeah, so you just mix the batter together and then you cut into circles and then you have to poke the hole in the center for whatever reason. When it comes to some strange concoctions that come out of donuts, I found that there's a pulled pork donut sandwich. Oh, oh, that sounds so good. Yep. And it's not even two half donuts. They actually use two whole donuts. Two whole donuts. Oh my God. So it's two whole donuts and the middle of the two are pulled pork, cheese and pickles. Okay, I'm so into that. There's your sweet and savory. <laughs> so into it. All right, gonna go get me some donuts and some pulled pork. Another related one I found were donut sloppy joes. So instead of uh, oh, a hot I'm dog bun, this. it's a donut. Nice. From our Canadian brethren, straight from the Calgary Stampede, is the jalapeno poutine mini donut bowl. Which what? is exactly what it says it is. <laughs> but... Instead of fries, it's mini donuts. Oh, okay. That sounds awful. <laughs> is that too? I don't, too, I don't too, like that. Too sweet and savory. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that mixture of things. <laughs> and I'm pretty open to a lot of mixtures. Yeah, that's of things. <laughs> I'm pretty surprised you. I thought you'd be excited about that one. Yeah, no, maybe it's because it's from Calgary. I don't know. Mm, <laughs> okay, let's try it again. From but fuck nowhere is this uh-huh. thing called jalapeno poutine mini donut bowls. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, it's, not <laughs> it's not doing it for me. When it comes to the national holiday of the donut, it's apparently contentious or not contentious. There's just two of them. It's the first Friday of June and November 5. Why do donuts get two days? I don't know. Apparently also mini donuts have their own day and May too. Um, when I looked into why there were two dates, I couldn't really see why there were, but the intentions of both of them seem to be related to war. So November 5 was chosen because it was close to Veterans the Day. The 5th of November. Remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> remember the donut before you remember <laughs> the veterans. <laughs> and then June, apparently, because I think there was a time back in the war where they needed pastries or something, and it just became that day. Oh, okay. <laughs> when it comes to, is it healthy or is it good? Surprise, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, are you that surprised? Yeah, it has as much. fried dough? Yep. Covered in sugar? Definitely not. So much sugar. It's deep fried. It's pretty much a corn dog with sugar. You Without have Cancer risks, heart risks. <laughs> um, but apparently some doctors claim that if consumed in moderation it could help as an emotional diet oh for those of you who like to eat your feelings yeah makes you happier um if it's good yeah i mean donuts are good. i love mini donuts i actually like just regular mini donuts where they just put a little bit of the sugar on top mm-hmm. and the ones that they put all the coverings like chocolate and all that just you don't get Too a much. taste of donut yeah. yeah i don't really think i'm a fan of sugar who knows that's probably a good thing. So. Yeah. Now, last but not least is, do you want to guess our last regular carnival food? Is it fried butter? It's a funnel cake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't covered funnel cake yet. Of course. This but, one I like. But do hold on to that last thought because we're going to get there. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's contradictory that I like funnel cake, but I don't like mini donuts. Even though they're both just fried dough. <laughs> yeah, that's actually interesting. Maybe maybe you want maybe you don't like mini donuts because of the word mini. No, I like mini things. They're so cute. But, but I guess eat, um, you're like, I can't eat enough of a mini donut. <laughs> I think it's because mini donuts are more bready. Mm, whereas possibly. funnel cakes are thinner and like right. just more crispy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I've never actually I never actually knew what funnel cake was before I started researching this. Oh, they're so good. I thought it was like a cake. Oh, sorry. I thought it was those chimney cakes that you get from. Oh, those like, are also good. <laughs> German markets and stuff. So yeah, they're good. I can't remember remember what they're called. For Delnicks. That's it. Yes. That's a Czech word for them. It I is. Don't know if they, yeah. Yeah. I blew so much money on those when I was in Prague. <laughs> My friend's like, "Do you want to go eat?" I'm like, "Only funnel cakes." <laughs> She's like, "No, I mean a meal." I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> only 
Only funnel cakes. Only chocolate cakes. Or whatever they're called. Neck. Treadle neck. Treadle necks. Yeah. Yeah. Chimney cakes, not funnel Chimney cakes. Chimney cakes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My bad. <laughs> now, the origin of the funnel cake apparently dates as far back as medieval Persia. Oh, wow. Where they were called, I think they were called mincebec, which is from the French word mise en bec, which translates to as put in spout. <laughs> pretty pretty literal there. It is pretty literal. Back then, it's similar here where the dough was funneled into oil and then using like funneling it into the oil and kind of creating a lattice kind of shape while yeah. it was cooking. It, there's no like standard shape. It's just, yeah. it looks like a scribble. Yeah. It's actually so cool. But back then, it was usually garnished with syrup and salt. So there's your sweet and savory mm. all over again. Yeah. Into it. Yeah. In America, apparently it was brought on by German immigrants again um, in the 1800s who would garnish it with fruit. It was known back then as Dreck der Kuch. Dreck der Kuch. <laughs> what their Kuch? <laughs> Dreck der Kuch. Kuch. Which comes from the Derm- German word Trichter, which means funnel. Hence why it's called funnel cake in America. It was apparently made popular... By the Pennsylvania Dutch, where some families brought versions of funnel cake in as they were settling into America. It's, there's this common perception that all Pennsylvania Dutch people used to eat it back then, but apparently research nowadays suggests that it wasn't as popular as we thought it was among the Pennsylvania Dutch community. It only really became popular and associated with the Pennsylvania Dutch during the Kutztown Folk Festival in 1950, where professors on Pennsylvania Dutch folklore presented elements of their culture during the festival. And one of it that they found was potentially funnel cake, which was served by this group of ladies, Grace Merkel Henninger, Stella Heinle, and Emma Miller. They Apparently brought funnel cake to this folk festival, and it was such a success that that's where funnel cakes rose in popularity. Good job, ladies. And guess what? They were not burned as witches. No, they were not. (laughs) Good thing they were born in the 50s. (laughs) You never know. When it comes to making funnel cake, um, the bad it really is just a batter, a funnel, and a fryer. And icing sugar. Yeah, and whatever toppings you want to put on there, exactly. The batter itself is flour, egg, salt, milk, and baking powder. Just your everyday average batter. Apparently squeeze bottles help with um, making funnel cake. Funneling them into the deep fry. Yeah, I assume that helps. That works a little bit better than like a cake bag. An icing bag, I mean. It's like so hot (laughs) over some boiling oil. (laughs) Yeah. You gotta drop it from a pie. I, I watched them make it. I just don't remember how far away they were. I think they had like a sque- like a industrial squeezer. Mm. You just put the dough in and then you just press the thing and it goes for you. Be cool if it's mechanized just to move randomly. So it's just a different funnel experience every time you buy one. And I don't think it pops as much anyway because the batter doesn't have a lot of water in it. And it's already a batter. So it's not going to explode like cooking bacon or something. No, it's pretty tame. It just yeah. kind of floats. It's yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> now, to create a proper funnel cake, it's better to run the batter at home as you're moving your hand as well. So don't keep your hand still as you're spreading it. Just make a canvas. Imagine yeah, make it like abstract art. Exactly. Imagine the oil as your canvas. Be one with the oil and the oil will be one with you. Become the Pollock of exactly. cake. <laughs> yeah. And then you can just grab something to pull it out and then remove it when it's golden brown. Easy peasy. Now to top it off, like you said, powdered sugar. You can also put some whipped cream, Nutella. Honestly, put whatever you want, man. <laughs> Personal favorite is strawberries. Ooh. <laughs> I have a few strange concoctions here that might actually change your mind. Because they're all sweet and savory. Okay. One Bacon? of it is the funnel cake cheeseburger. Oh my god. <laughs> Which is exactly still what my heart. It is. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, it's gonna just die. Still your heart. Yep. <laughs> and might as well, while enjoying your cheeseburger, have the Fiesta funnel cake, which is the funnel cake with jalapeno, salsa, and cheese. It's nachos. Weird. 
funnel yeah, cake, I guess. <laughs> Nacho funnel cake. Nacho. That would be... <laughs> Nacho why? usual funnel cake. <laughs> yeah. Why are they called the Fiesta funnel cake? Called the Nacho funnel yeah, cake. Funnel cake. <laughs> I'd be into that, actually. Yeah. Ooh, maybe we should start a food truck. Just call it Nacho oh. funnel cake. <laughs> nacho ordinary funnel cake. We can have cheese option or not cheese option. Mm-hmm. You put fried chicken or pulled pork. Oh my god, now you're getting fancy. <laughs> yeah. The national holiday of funnel cake is July 16th. No, Sorry. not my birthday. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> when it comes to is it healthier, is it good, it's donuts. So it's same not. answer as donuts. <laughs> yeah, unfortunate. I think we clocked in at some very unhealthy totals. Yeah, Kelly. I think we were 100% unhealthy and 100% good on all of those. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> what I'm here for. I'm yeah. about to eat some ice cream after we're done recording. <laughs> oh, there you go. So that's what we had for your usual food you could find at Carnival. Um, you could send us whatever your favorite Carnival food is at your own Carnival. If we didn't cover it, which I don't, I feel like we've covered most things that I've seen. Yeah, I think so too. All right. Sweet. So I think now is a good time as any to probably pause Paper this. off. <laughs> yeah. This episode went on a lot longer than we thought. So we're probably going to do a two-parter on this. So next weird week. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. going to cover all the weird or strange different dishes that we found. Wait till you hear what my new favorite cluster of words is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you said I don't you did know say, how to describe. You said you had like a story about. about carnival that you wanted to share. Oh yes. Oh no. So we could end on that. I don't remember what it is now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a good. It's a good I thing we're going to two parts. We're losing our minds a good already. Story, and I don't remember it now. Oh well. But um, I did. I do remember one time. Um. I was at a carnival for so long that they were closing and I refused to leave because there were no lines for the roller coaster. So I just kept going. Like, I actually got off the roller coaster and then went back in line just to get on the <laughs> roller coaster again. And I did that like five or six times. The guy was just like, okay. And then he, he like left. He's like, you could just stay on it. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and then he came back with like three bags of mini donuts because they're trying to get rid of them. And he's like, here. <laughs> Enjoy. Best day of my life. That's awesome. <laughs> Good job, guy. Good job, dude. His soul is probably dead. <laughs> Running this carnival where like nobody else was there. <laughs> it was just me. <laughs> Got the full VIP experience. I, I convinced my mom that I am grown up enough to hit the carnival <laughs> by myself. <laughs> and you came to the carnival and you were literally that, by yourself. <laughs> I was literally by myself. and But then I walked away with so many donuts. Nice. That's a good that day, wasn't though. the story that I wanted to tell, but that is a story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, for anyone else who has maybe a carnival story or other rituals or myths or any other food-related strangeness you have that you want us to explore, you just find us at the Smorgies Pod in Instagram or Twitter, or you could email us at smorgasbord at geekhappynetwork.com. I want to hear from everybody, whether we just like to hear from not? everybody. Yeah. <laughs> This, this is Smorgasbord! This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico. This show was produced by Geek Happy Network. Constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts.